Since the dawn of civilization, humans have been drawn to city living. A center of commerce and innovation, cities have been key in kickstarting changes to society. The city has been a beloved set for artists and visionaries to dream of future life. As technology continued to advance, we imagined polished, futuristic communities without the stress of the current age. But instead of robot chefs and floating schools, we may be more on track for a future that reduces living conditions. As climate change and sea levels rise, our cities will be impacted first, as many are located near a coast. The thing is, our cities are serious contributors to climate change, consuming 80% of the world's energy and producing a majority of our world's greenhouse emissions, despite taking up less than 2% of our planet's surface. The solution? major changes to the way we move, live, and work in urban communities. This is archival footage from San Francisco in 1906. This stroll shows us a day in the life of a city from the early 20th century. People are casually walking across several lanes of traffic and all kinds of transportation take passengers toward their destination at human, walkable speeds. In this era, the city streets act as an extension of pedestrian living, a shared pathway that accommodated a variety of transportation methods. Flash forward to today and nearly 200,000 Californians drive into San Francisco for work on a daily basis. And because nearly 76% of Americans drive into work alone, commuters are burning quite a bit of CO2. 2018 saw record levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, with analysis suggesting petrol and diesel car sales will need to end by the year 2030. Currently, every day millions of Americans are driving from suburban areas into their city center. To move away from this reality, cities need improved public transportation options and an overall pedestrian-friendly city to make mass transit more attractive. Billionaire Elon Musk is looking to solve mass transportation with The Boring Company. By building a network of underground tunnels, commuters can travel throughout a city without contributing to congestion. The nice thing about tunnels is you can go 3D. So oh, you can go right. many levels. Right. So Until you hit hell. <laughs> yeah. But you could go, you could have 100 levels of tunnel. No problems. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't want to be on 99. I'm to be on 99th, negative 99 floors. Ooh. With the potential to build hundreds of stations no bigger than a few parking spots, Elon's hoping that his 3D tunnel solution will provide game-changing infrastructure for the future of mass transit. Autonomous self-driving electric vehicles also present many options for mass transit and on-demand travel to reduce the need for car ownership. Take Optibus, who recently raised $40 million to build an AI platform for autonomous bus routes. They recognize current infrastructure is out of date and see an opportunity for the future of automated, intelligent routes based on commuter destination and pickup point. It's likely we'll start seeing fully autonomous vehicles on sale within the next five years. And as self-driving tech continues to heat up, there are a number of other applications for consumer use. For example, analysis suggests that by 2030, 95% of passenger miles traveled will be served by cars owned by tech companies, providing transport as a service. In major cities, ride-sharing products like Uberpool are already affordable, lowering prices in exchange for sharing a ride with other passengers. A driverless future means a whole new fleet of electric, self-driving, on-demand vehicles for commuters to use. The autonomous car presents a new opportunity for marketers as well. Just as Amazon sells you a Kindle at cost, Uber and Lyft could look to use their shuttles as advertising space. Forbes speculated on this possibility. Quote, Autonomous will become the new entertainment field. So while consumers are relaxing on their commute to work, they will not only be on their phone and computers, but they will also have touchscreens in the car and projections, or even holograms on the windshield with which to interact. By reducing the human element, pooling individuals with similar routes, and by using electric vehicles as ad space, we could see Uber and Lyft become incredibly affordable options for travelers, making car ownership unnecessary for many. For future generations, it could be an entirely fringe concept. 
As transit options improve in quality and cost, cities will also need to offer better support for alternative transportation options. Protected bike lanes and expanded sidewalks offer infrastructure for dockless vehicles like electric scooters. Doing this takes cars off the road, reduces a city's contribution to carbon emissions, and most importantly makes a city more friendly for those without a car, making mass transit much more attractive. See, transit is commonly built in a spoke and wheel format, taking citizens from their suburban homes into the city itself. So when Walt Disney wanted to build his own city of the future in the early 1960s, he immediately began designing around this concept. We call it the radio plan. Picture a wheel. Like the spokes of the wheel, the city fans out along a series of radials from a bustling hub at the center of Epcot. A network of transportation systems radiate from the central hub, carrying people to and from the heart of the city. This is historically how cities work. Commuters move from their neighborhood into one central area and back. This is why reinventing metropolitan transit is so key, not just to combat climate change, but to change how urban communities function in the first place. Hey guys, thanks again for stopping by Culture Brand. Let me know in the comments down below, what are your thoughts on the future of cities and self-driving cars? It sure will be interesting to watch how that pans out. If you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe and drop a like down below. It definitely helps me out.